previously on the dragon ship. Phil, you brought up probably the most salient point here. All of us men on the panel right now have children. Yes, and sir. I want to provide at least some sort of actionable thoughts that people can take back and can think about and investigate, especially everybody in the chat. And guys, if you would, we love your questions. It would be really appreciated if you throw a super chat for any price. It doesn't matter. And or go over to RP Thor and join the membership. We're going to get into this way in depth. I'm going to do some live streams over there on the membership. Right now, there's only a couple guys in there, so it should be really fun. But, you know, that salient point is we have daughters. What would we tell our daughters knowing that we know at least we have a concept and an understanding of female nature? How would you preface it? And we'll go around the table. How would you preface it with your daughters today? My daughter has grown and has done a lot of great things. I would like to think that I implied it in with my thoughts. But now that I have this knowledge, it might be a little different how I would make that approach. How, how would you do it today so that she is more in control of her choices when it comes to her inbuilt uh, uh, duality and mate selection? How would, you, how would you train them or teach them? What would, what would you leave them with if you just had a couple points to make? Just a couple. You want me to go first? I'll be happy yeah, to. Yeah, I mean, anybody that wants to go. Yeah, sure. Yeah, all, I'll jump on that. I'll, and and yeah, we've done yeah. this to some extent. So, either through social construct or warnings or examples. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Helps. And and so basically with my daughter, you know, from a relatively young age, I'm going to say 13, 14, we started talking about sex and what, what it is and what those urges are, you know, and learning how to be respectful and respecting yourself at this time in your life and not making any rash decisions on those urges that you have. Um, and realizing that, uh, your chastity, believe it or not, is going to, whether you protect it or give it away is going to have a direct result in who you're going to be later in life when you're a full grown woman and you have a life of your own. Um, she's got a little bit of a cheat code. She goes to a private school. So there's a little bit of that, you know, influence there as well. And, uh, and she's got friends that have already dabbled, you know, and, and having boyfriends and sex and things like that. And she looks down upon them and she understands that, you know, the appropriate thing to do based on what she's learned through myself and through school is to, to hold her chastity until she, you know, gets married, if at all possible, mm -hmm. you know, and having that control mechanism in your mind, understanding those hormones are raging, those feelings you're having are completely natural and normal. And uh, understand that, uh, you know, Young boys, uh, especially when you get into, you know, upper teens, early 20s, uh, there's not going to be a long term prospect there. I mean, there's there are very few and far between that you hear about people that get together in high school and stay together for the rest of their life. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. Yeah, I'm just saying the prospect of that is very, very small. And so looking at that, I just told her, I said, you, you might want to consider that because you say you, you work on yourself and do very well for yourself in school and you get in the medical field and you're ready to have a family and meet a good man. And he says, oh, by the way, tell me about your life. And he says, no, I can't do that with you. Along with the damage that comes along with giving away your chastity, you know, and, and you know, the causality of what happens when you take too many of them too many bodies at a young age. So that's pretty much the way I've handled that with her. You know, the decision is ultimately hers, you know, and I just tried to educate her a little bit on, you know, the aspects of it. You know, it's amazing to me. It's a shame that, you know, a lot of, a lot of girls, they didn't have that opportunity when they were younger. Mark, what do you got? Well, I think it's up to the father to guide and, and teach their daughter what, you know, the consequences of her actions, not so much as the mother, um, because as a man, you know what the men are wanting when they're coming there, especially when they're young. Well, it's, my daughter's 16, so she's dating. Um, I was at age one time, and I know what I wanted, and I've encouraged her to marry, if she decides to, somewhere between 20 and 22, but not to marry a, a man in, her 20, in his 20s. I don't know about you guys, but in my 20s, I was married at 24, but I wasn't... I wasn't ready to settle down yet. Men in their twenties are still wanting to run around and spread their seeds, so to speak. So I explain all that to her, and um, she has a difficult time finding. I mean, she's dating now, but most of the the boys turn into how do I say they're weak. 
I don't know if they don't have a father at home or what the problem is. And it's very, well, she came up and sat on my lap last night and was crying because her and this friend quit talking. Um, I said, well, you're going to go through a lot of guys. I said, it's just the way it is. You know, I haven't told her not to be sleeping with all these guys, of course. And like Phil said, ultimately it's her choice. But I explained to her the consequences of that. And, and also I encourage her to marry, but I don't encourage my sons to marry here in the, in the States because she has everything to gain and really nothing to lose. I know some women think that, oh, well, what if I give myself to this man and, and then he just bails out on me? Well, she's not really going to be at a loss for anything, especially if they have kids. She'll still have her kids provided for. So I just try to explain to her that, you know, how, how young boys are, how I was, and, and what most of them want. And of course, at those young ages, they're not looking for anything serious. Usually, They may think they are. They think they're in love because they're thinking with that small head instead of their big head. So really, that's all I can do is just tell her how things are from, the, from, from their point. Give her an understanding of what these boys want and what a man wants when she gets ready to get married, uh, what kind of a woman they're looking for. And it's, it's a woman. A man, the kind of man that I want to marry her is the kind of man is, is going to be, he probably is not going to accept a woman with a high body count. Uh, he wants a woman who has not been with a lot of guys and a woman who is, you know, that can take care of him and, and provide a peaceful home for him and everything, you know, a mother to the children and somebody who can, that's what women don't understand. I don't, I don't care how much a woman makes. I don't care what her career is. And that's why I try to explain to her. Men, a man that you want, a good man, is going to provide a good lifestyle. doesn't care about that stuff. As long as you're not sitting around the house watching soap operas, eating chocolate, and getting fat. And if you're doing something, you don't have to have a career. You don't have to go to college. You don't have to do all that. That's the way I look at it. Because I've always taken care of my women. I didn't have to worry about it. So that's my, my take on it. If you haven't already, Join Thor's The Dragon's Membership. It's a men's monthly interactive meeting in cyberspace. This is a mask on place for men that is censorship free to help you increase your performance, converse as well as leverage ideas, and get coaching consultations on how to handle life's issues in a modern world. This is a unique place. This is a discreet place, and it's a place for men. So what are you waiting for? Join The Dragon's Membership today